Hi, everyone, and welcome to Azure Cosmos TV Conference 2024. My name is Mike Calvin, and uh, today I'll be telling you a little bit about how uh, Connectify uses Azure Cosmos TV uh, and several other services in Azure uh, to help fight financial crime uh, in the gaming industry, specifically uh, attacks and money laundering and the, uh, uh, the other criminal activities that are associated with money laundering. Uh, I'll start today with kind of what is Connectify. Uh, Connectify is a uh, cloud SaaS-based application uh, targeted at the gaming industry that ingests thousands of transactions per second from the largest gaming operators in the world. And it is our job to evaluate those transactions, identify patterns uh, that indicate criminal activity, and then notify the operators of these gaming organizations so that they can uh, take appropriate action, complete investigations, and uh, file appropriate government filings uh, to ensure that they maintain compliance with the Bank Secrecy Act and other regulations that they're required to stay in compliance with. And uh, Connectify is the first uh, kind of cloud-based leading edge software platform targeted specifically for the gaming industry. They're an organization that's kind of, or a, a market rather, that's been left behind a little bit in the technology space for a long time. You see a lot of uh, great anti-money laundering software out there for banking and other financial services, and Connectify brings some of that knowledge and expertise to the gaming industry uh, and, and help them maintain their compliance and also uh, find criminals that are using their system. Money laundering is a crime that uh, is a symptom, a symptom of another crime, really. You know, no one just uh, uh, goes out and performs money laundering. They're actually uh, performing other criminal activity that leads to money laundering, things like terrorist financing, uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking, et cetera. So our software is designed to really help uh, these organizations identify those criminals and, uh, and keep them from using their services inappropriately. Our goal is to bring efficiency to these organizations. A lot of work is occurring uh, currently in the gaming industry through Excel spreadsheets and Google searches, really. And Connectify brings some leading edge technology using services hosted in Azure uh, to, uh, to really increase the efficiency and give these gaming operators the visibility and transparency into what's happening in their organization that they don't have right now. And we are a cloud SaaS only solution hosted in Azure. Uh, and uh, we've, been, uh, we've been in Azure for three years. My first move as a CTO when I came on board to Connectify was to set up our Azure account and get going there. I've been working with Azure for about 10 years now, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, even since before they had virtual machines. And I've been working with Azure Cosmos DB since it was Azure Document DB a long time ago. So uh, uh, Connectify is, uh, is ingrained in Azure resources, and we are uh, committed to building and expanding our footprint in Azure uh, to, to bring the most value that we possibly can to our customers. Uh, so one of the things I really wanted to point out on this slide before we move on is really what the problem is, because uh, the money laundering and identifying criminal activity is awesome from a mission statement for us. But uh, for this audience, understanding the technical problem and the, uh, the complexities that we have is really uh, you know, kind of the most important part of this slide. So what I want to explain is Connectify's job is to ingest every transaction that occurs in, you know, in Las Vegas, basically. And uh, we're going to ingest those transactions, analyze them, identify uh, patterns of activity that indicate criminal activity, and then uh, produce alerts, uh, investigations, and then uh, ending with government filings uh, going to the U.S. government, either to the Treasury Department or uh, FinCEN, for example. So uh, it's a huge problem. It's a huge technical problem. Uh, we ingest uh, thousands of transactions per second. And we have to be able to ingest that data, store it, and then analyze it. And what I want to talk to you about today is kind of how Connectify does that. Uh, we'll start by covering platform architecture for Connectify and talk about some of the services that we use. We're a, we are a service-oriented architecture. And we decompose our services by domain in the application. So um, rather than a traditional microservice architecture, we kind of group our services a little bit larger than that, uh, but we are uh, a 
web API, .NET, Docker uh, platform. All of our Docker containers are hosted inside of Linux containers in uh, Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, our front ends are built using Angular and TypeScript and a variety of other front end libraries that help us uh, produce excellent displays. And uh, our back end is largely Azure functions that are containerized and hosted inside our Kubernetes service also. Um, multiple uh, messaging systems that serve different purposes for the platform. And, uh, uh, and we're uh, implementing currently our data lake and uh, big data analytics solutions uh, that are gonna support some of our machine learning uh, efforts that we have coming over the next, uh, the next couple of quarters. So that's a, a high level of the technology that we use. And uh, I want to get into the details with you a little bit on uh, each of those components. And we'll start with why we chose Azure Cosmos DB as our operational data store for the platform. Uh, like I was mentioning before, we ingest thousands of these financial transactions a second. And we need a scalable solution uh, that is also geo redundant. And uh, Cosmos DB is the uh, uh, best in class solution for that. Uh, they also offer single millisecond latency point reads, which is a hugely important thing for us being able to retrieve and analyze data quickly. Uh, the multi-master writing and geo-replication capabilities in Cosmos are amazing. Uh, being able to scale our, uh, our data to the different regions in Azure that are closest to our customers, uh, both gives us a high availability solution, uh, ensuring that uh, we've got uh, geo-replicated data around the world, and also a very low latency solution that uh, prevents uh, network latency by allowing us to query our data from uh, those regions that are closest to the customers that are interacting with it. I know I mentioned before that you know our goal is to, to ingest every transaction every time chips change hands in, uh, in Las Vegas, but uh, we really have customers across the United States, and uh, we need to be able to host our data uh, in regions that are close to them to ensure that they get the same experience uh, that our, our customers in Las Vegas do. Uh, and finally, one of the biggest reasons why we use Azure Cosmos DB, and one of the things that I'm most excited to talk to you about today is the de developer productivity gains. Uh, so uh, I've broken that out into to kind of four sections here. Uh, first, it's uh, uh, Cosmos DB is a document database that is schemaless. Uh, it allows us to handle uh, application level versioning. So as our data structures change in our platform, we're able to make adjustments to those data structures, save them in the same places in, in Cosmos that the version ones and you know, previous versions were at uh, without having to make any kind of complicated uh, changes to the schema of our database. Uh, that's a pretty common capability across many different document database solutions. Uh, for example, Mongo, which is something I used to use before I, uh, I was able to, uh, to build uh, some of these cloud solutions off of, uh, off of Cosmos DB. But uh, that allows us to maximize flexibility, uh, allowing us to make changes quickly and not have to, to be concerned about the persistence layer of our application uh, as we're creating new features and making adjustments in our platform. Uh, it basically increases uh, stability, reduces deployment complexity. I know, you know, in my previous experience working in the relational database world, we would often have uh, data migrations that needed to run where you're, you know, creating, uh, you know, new columns in a table or adding views or uh, uh, other ways of structuring your data uh, that have to be a part of a deployment well, with Cosmos, we don't ever have to make those changes. We do sometimes have to make data modifications uh, to roll versions of our, our objects forward and whatnot. Uh, but uh, it really simplifies deployment, reduces the, the risk of deploying uh, large changes in our platform. So we're able to change uh, very quickly, release new features very quickly uh, because we're able to persist our data in a way uh, that doesn't depend on a, a very strict schema. Uh, the next uh, advantage that we get out of, uh, of using Cosmos is uh, excellent, well-documented SDKs that are consistent with, uh, with other Azure libraries that we use. Uh, so I've been using Cosmos DB for uh, at least seven years now. 
uh, in its various forms. And uh, I've never had a problem with the SDK that uh, prevented me from being able to query or um, uh, as new features have been rolled out, uh, they've always been very well documented, backwards compatible. So having a really stable way of interacting with, with Cosmos has been very helpful to, uh, to my development team and being able to uh, reliably deliver new features on Cosmos and make Cosmos an integral part of our, uh, our production environment. The uh, uh, SDKs also provide an extremely powerful query ability that uh, matches the behaviors that we use in, um, in C Sharp regularly. So they have awesome support for link. You can uh, query in link just like you'd be querying uh, collections in memory if you wanted to. Uh, there's excellent batch execution libraries to increase performance of querying without having the complexity of having to implement that, that batching and uh, parallelization yourself. And also uh, aggregates, functions, and projections that allow us to create highly optimized queries on the platform and ensure that we're able to maintain the performance levels that our customers require. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the generic repository pattern that we've been using. It's actually a library that I put together. Um, I started about six years ago before I started working at Connectify. And uh, it's a library that really simplifies the use of, uh, of Cosmos DB, uh, abstracts the complexities of querying and partitioning and whatnot away from the, the developers that need to consume that data. And it covers 80% of the... Uh, the reads and writes that need to occur in our platform, making it very easy for our team to get started and us to bring on new team members quickly without having to understand uh, the details of Cosmos DB and how to query efficiently. Uh, generic repository, like I said, is a library that was developed, uh, started development about six years ago. It's actively developed today. Uh, it's an open source MIT licensed library. I definitely recommend uh, going and checking out this GitHub link to uh, to see how the, how the library works. We've also got uh, some excellent tests and example projects up there that can show you how to use the library. Uh, follows the decorator pattern uh, for extensibility. So we've uh, decorated the generic repository library with the capability of distributed caching, uh, with indexing, with Azure uh, AI search, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, it's a highly extensible library. And uh, it's been so successful in my company that uh, a lot of my development team has never even written a Cosmos query themselves. They don't. They wouldn't uh, go write a query directly uh, in our application. They can access the data uh, easily through the repository interfaces without having to uh, to go into the details of Cosmos at all. The uh, generic repository library also is highly extensible, uh, supporting uh, Azure AI search indexing, distributed caching. Uh, and uh, bulk execution library uh, through Azure Cosmos DB. Now I'd like to take a second and uh, show you how the generic repository works that we've been using uh, from the start with Connectify. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at here is how you set up the library for use. Uh, it reads in uh, configuration from an app settings file. Uh, you can register it in, a, uh, in the IOC container using uh, standard uh, C-sharp, uh, uh, the service provider interface and whatnot. And, uh, and then you initialize it uh, just like this. Uh, you pass in an Azure Cosmos DB client, a logger, uh, the configuration that comes out of uh, your app settings. And in this case, I'm uh, setting the container that I want to store this data in. Here's an example object. Uh, I've created a, a couple of objects here that we're going to store. Uh, that have different types of properties in them. So you can see kind of how serialization works and kind of what the power of uh, this generic repository is. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll run this example test here uh, that inserts an item into uh, Cosmos collection. In this case, it's a testing collection. And here I'm about to insert an item uh, that uh, has a child object with a number eight and a uh, we're going to insert that. And uh, as you see here, we get a, uh, a successful result back. I mean, that's the GUID, that's the unique identifier for the object. And uh, if we go take a look 
in Cosmos, here's the, the collection that we're writing in. Uh, here's that object that we just wrote right here. Now, uh, like I was saying, the, the, the developer productivity you get from working with Cosmos is the ability to not have to define a schema, uh, and, uh, but still having the flexibility to query uh, without a schema, essentially. So I'm going to show you that now. Uh, we're going to change that, that test object a little bit. We're going to add a new property in here. Uh, we're gonna make it. Uh, we'll just make it a string for now. We're gonna call it example property, and then uh, we'll go over to our test. And in this object, we're going to add in that example property here. Example. Um, All right. Now I'm gonna save that. We're going to run this again. And in no time at all, uh, we've been able to add a new property into our object. No modification to schema, no database deployments. Uh, uh, simple addition. You can do that pretty easily with Mongo as well. We're not really showing anything uh, outlandish here. But the next thing that you can do is uh, you can query for that data as well. So instead of doing an update here, I'm instead going to make a new query real quick. And as you can see, uh, we were able to find that object. Uh, that we had just inserted, no uh, uh, no modifying uh, schemas, no uh, creating a, a DTO layer and uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, re-index objects or, or otherwise make them searchable. Uh, you can just modify your objects, store them in Cosmos on the fly as you'd like to. And, uh, and these repository pattern objects allow you to interact with that data uh, without having to really think about uh, Cosmos DB and the data tier uh, as you're defining your object structures and your platform in general. So a super powerful way of uh, being able to focus on uh, developing the objects for your platform and not how they're stored in the database. So that's kind of how the generic repository works. Uh, if you get a chance, go take a look at this, uh, this GitHub link and, uh, and you can see the details there. There's a lot of tests and examples showing you how to use that library. I want to talk about um, the uh, our pipeline for how we ingest thousands of transactions per second into our platform and the role that Cosmos DB plays in that. So uh, here's kind of a, a little placemat of how uh, how ingestion works in our platform. Uh, we have data that can come in through our customer facing APIs uh, or uh, other file-based transfer methods like SFTP, for example, into blob storage, that data gets ingested into uh, a uh, Azure Event Hub. That Event Hub has uh, analytic services on it that give us operational information about how much data is flowing through that Event Hub at any one time. We have live Power BI dashboards connected to these analytic services that tell us what, uh, what tenants are generating transactions and how many they're are coming in, how many duplicates we're seeing, so on and so forth. Uh, data goes through that event hub uh, to a stream analytics service that's actually being converted to an Azure function now uh, to enrich the data, add some tenant information, and then pass it on to another event hub that uh, is responsible for inserting that data directly into Cosmos, and then uh, also ending in a uh, Azure data lake, which we're going to get to in just a second when we talk about uh, machine learning and how we've implemented machine learning in the platform. Um, the, uh, the services here are designed to, uh, to receive bulk messages through the event hub and write them uh, at very high throughput into Cosmos, into our Cosmos collections. Uh, our collection, for example, that's uh, holding transaction data is running at about 50,000 RUs right now. Uh, and we plan on in increasing that by nearly double in the next month. So uh, we ingest large volumes of data. Uh, that data gets written into Cosmos and then our platform 
uh, executes all of the different analytics and analysis that needs to occur uh, off that data, off of our operational data store, and then stores those results in our data lake. Uh, so uh, the reason why we moved to this method, we initially started with uh, Azure Service Bus. Azure Service Bus has a limit of 30,000 transactions per second or 30,000 messages per second uh, on an Azure Service Bus topic. And Event Hubs doesn't have that limitation. So we're able to reach much higher throughput uh, using Event Hubs in this scenario at the expense of some enterprise features uh, that we do use in the platform. So that's why we have two messaging systems, an Event Hub system and a uh, Azure Service Bus as well. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, AI at Connectify and how we're using AI. Uh, we have multiple use cases for it. We've got large language model, natural language processing needs uh, to generate government filings uh, and also to summarize the investigations that occur in our platform uh, to provide visibility to management and executive layers of the our operators' organizations. And uh, we're able to uh, generate uh, large volumes of metadata around uh, players' behavior, summarize it with our, our large language models, and then present that information in a human-readable format to our, uh, uh, to our operators and their management. Uh, we also have a need for traditional uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning workloads, things like alert detection, anomaly detection, behavior evaluation, and uh, clustering and relationship management or identification as well. Uh, the way we do that is using a, uh, an AI ML uh, operations pipeline that's structured uh, like this. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see basically our Connectify operational platform with those event hubs and service buses feeding data into Cosmos DB. Uh, the event hubs also feed data uh, directly into Microsoft Fabric uh, into a, uh, a lake house that we've created uh, using the medallion architecture. So the reason why we do that, we ingest raw data directly into Fabric through the event hubs for players and transactions. Uh, that data then gets uh, enriched and anonymized and then referenced using a, uh, uh, a shortcut between uh, the bronze tier and the silver tier. So we don't have to duplicate the data. Uh, we can still read those, uh, those parquet files directly out of the players and transactions lake houses, uh, anonymize that data and then view it in our, our silver tier, which is where our data science and uh, data engineering teams work off of. And uh, we run our machine learning workloads, uh, all of the training and testing that occurs off of that AI lake house with anonymized data in the platform. And uh, this allows us to, in near real time, ingest data directly into our data lake, and then uh, execute training and, uh, and testing operations on our machine learning workloads uh, as often as we'd like to. We, we, uh, we can release new versions of our, our models on a, uh, we, we target a, a sprint basis right now every two weeks, but uh, there's nothing that would prevent us from releasing models uh, faster than that if we wanted to. Uh, we're using uh, Azure OpenAI for our LLM usage, uh, specifically uh, ChatGTP 3.5 and uh, uh, with RAG for generating our, uh, our uh, narratives and summarizations of those, uh, those investigations. And then uh, we have uh, several uh, machine learning, uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio pipelines uh, that are producing different models and allows our data science team to experiment very easily with live data uh, without impacting our production environment or uh, impacting our production performance. Uh, so that's how Connectify has implemented uh, Fabric, which is a new service from Microsoft, into our, uh, our platform for ingesting data so that we can very quickly uh, train new machine learning workloads and, and give our data science team the power to investigate without, um, without any impact to production performance at all. And Cosmos DB plays a huge, huge role in that. One of the, the important things that I didn't get a chance to touch on yet is how we get data from Cosmos DB over into this uh, uh, Microsoft Fabric space. Uh, we start with uh, Azure Data Factory, but our team is currently evaluating Cosmos DB mirroring which is a new feature that's in uh, public preview now uh, from, uh, 
from the Microsoft Fabric team that allows you to uh, essentially clone data in real time from your uh, Azure Cosmos DB directly into Fabric uh, for uh, analytics purposes and whatnot. I want to wrap up this conversation with some lessons learned uh, over uh, you know, eight to 10 years of working with Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, the first thing that you should consider when you start working with Cosmos, especially if you have large workloads, is you need to structure your data appropriately. Uh, you need to consider uh, how large your documents get you need, and uh, whether you should be denormalizing or not. Uh, this is not a SQL database. You're not trying, your goal is not to minimize the amount of storage that your, uh, your data takes up. Your goal is to uh, structure your data for querying purposes so that uh, you can achieve maximum uh, performance and, uh, uh, and reduce the number of queries and the complexity of the queries that need to be executed uh, for you to be able to present your data through your platform correctly. Uh, so I would encourage you to investigate embedding data using a hybrid embed strategy or using separate documents and relating them through, uh, uh, through uh, key-like relationships that are not enforced in, uh, in Cosmos. So you, your application takes on the overhead of uh, enforcing those relationships, uh, but it, the value you get out of that is massive throughput gains and uh, multi-master writing and ability to geo-replicate, things that are all very difficult to accomplish in other data uh, storage solutions. Uh, another thing to remember as you're structuring your data is collections are not tables and don't treat them like they are tables. You can think of a collection in Cosmos, Azure Cosmos DB more like a, a folder than a, uh, than a table where you have many different objects of different types in there and uh, your application owns um, selecting the right data out of those collections based on the types and whatnot. And that's something that that generic repository I was talking about has really aided our team in. Uh, another thing you'll notice if you, if you go dig into that generic repository, we have type name handling turned on by default, uh, which is, simplifies de deserialization of data coming out of Cosmos DB, those JSON objects, so that you don't have to build a bunch of JSON converters. But uh, it is not a great solution uh, when you're ingesting data through systems that are not written in C-sharp. Uh, one of my uh, examples there is using Azure Data Factory to transfer data. It gets tripped up on that type name handling pretty regularly. And I would caution you against using that in, unless you absolutely need to, to, uh, uh, to deserialize your objects correctly. Uh, you also want to make sure that you plan uh, your partitioning strategy so that you're querying for 80% uh, of the time when you're generating queries, they're partitioned queries. If you, uh, if you don't do that, you're going to run into performance problems pretty significantly when, uh, you, uh, when you start ingesting large volumes of data. So ensure that you've partitioned your data properly and that you're, you're querying your data by partition always. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you for, for joining me as we talk about uh, how Connectify is using Cosmos DB. Uh, to revolutionize the gaming industry and uh, and solving uh, anti-money laundering compliance problems for the gaming gaming market. Uh, I hope you get a chance to to work with Cosmos DB in the future and enjoy the rest of uh, Azure Cosmos DB Conference 2024. Thank you.